Well, it is officially that time of the year. We get to actually talk some college football. You and I have spent plenty of times over the years doing like Facebook Lives and all these different other social media deals. So every single Tuesday, we decided to do something here, at kind of second home, Pac-12 Network headquarters. The actual television show that we do is called Inside Pac-12 Football, which is on Pac-12 Network, 6 p.m. Pacific time every single Tuesday. But for this, we figured we'd just go a couple minutes here and take people through the league. I had said to you, I want to do one game, one player, one moment. And you said you were cool with that. Let's go. Okay, I mean, so there's a lot to talk about. There's a you ton. put the restrictions on. I did. I've narrowed the focus down because we have an actual TV show to do, and because we're restricted on time, I thought we would focus in on one game. And there's a ton of Week One games that are pretty good, but the one that seems to have been circled for a while: Oregon and Auburn. Specifically, the the one thing that you're looking forward to in that game. Oregon winning. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that, that's like the the easy coach speak answer, probably. I'm really excited to watch Justin Herbert have fun. Can he, in coming back with all the hype, enjoy it? And if he could do that and doesn't feel the heat and doesn't feel the pressure of you're the star, you're the number one draft pick, you got a Heisman you know, campaign naturally just because where you play and who you play. If he can have joy and play like that, I think it's going to just completely go through the veins of the rest of his teammates. And that is the number one thing I'm looking forward to watching. All right. More more on the game in just a second here. But you mentioned Justin Herbert having fun. And you have a Heisman vote. And I'm sure you do sort of a preseason watch list, I would imagine. I don't know for sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Justin Herbert, I would imagine, is on that list. I would assume LaVisca Chenault is uh, on that Colorado squad, also one of those guys. But what I always think is really interesting is – we see these dudes on Saturdays and we see these awesome moments as actual players. And I want to take people back and kind of, you know, remove the curtain for a second. We were down in Los Angeles, Pac-12 Football Media Day, and we got to do a, a media training. It was me, you, Ashley Adamson, our other host of the Pac-12 Network. And you took them through an exercise where you said, tell me, and I don't want to misquote the question, but it was something to the effect of like, tell me 10 things that you want to do in your life, yeah. something along those lines. And most of the players, you got 24 student athletes, and these guys want to be sun Sunday players. They all will talk about being a football player at the professional level, being rich, being famous. And Justin Herbert's response, we've done this for a few years, was so different than any other response that I had heard in any other year we've been doing this. Um, granted, he, he mentioned being an NFL player. I, I get that. But the first three things that he had said, do you remember what they were? Please. Okay. So it was uh, be a great husband, be a father, and be good to my family or support my family. Like that that is such a different response. And you think about a kid who's been at Pac-12 Media Day now three consecutive years. There is a different level of maturity every single year. You see this growth, and it's got to be pretty cool. And you were on a staff at USC where you saw players over the years. I would imagine when the freshman comes in and then seeing them on the back end and just how they've grown is got to be one of the best parts about being a coach at any level, specifically at the college level. Yeah, and I think you have to give a lot of credit to Marcus Arroyo. He gets a lot yeah. of criticism as an offensive coordinator. Nobody wants to talk about the drops they had last year, et cetera. And I, and I get that. That's terrible. That's the seat he's in. Uh, but the way he's developed this young man, he, he could have left easily and made, taken all the money, you know, and done what 99% of the people would do. But sure. he came back. And I remember I was there. My first day at SC was when Matt Leinert came back. He had just won the Heisman as a sophomore, or no, won it as a junior, came back and went to it the very next year, and they won a couple natties. And you walk around with a different confidence. I was there over the weekend, and I watched him walk to practice. He's like, hey, what's up, Yogan? And we're just talking. And it's like he, he looks like he's really settled in sure. to being the senior. And I think, and I know a focus for him and Marcus has been, let's make sure we enjoy it. Right? Mario Cristobal has told us that multiple times. So that, to me, is going to be huge because if he starts to feel it, Everybody's going to feel it. All right, so the conversation was supposed to be one game. It really became one game and more like a player. But I want another player from you. JT Daniels. Oh, here we JT go. JT Daniels, right? This was the dude. Yeah. I called the first game with Ted Robinson of his entire career in college. He should have been a senior in high school, right? It was a ton of pub around him. Coming out of one of the biggest schools in the world, modern day, et cetera, et cetera. He was supposed to be better for Sam Darnold. It was good that Sam left early because we didn't even know if he would have started because of JT Daniels. I was told that by some people in Southern California. Clearly, that wouldn't have been the case. It's also clear that he was a true freshman last year, and they struggled at times. And I thought for a true freshman, he actually played pretty good. So now, yeah. here we are, and they had to deprogram him a little bit. Right? He was and is a coverage scientist. And in the air raid philosophy, as you know, Mike, the only rule is don't be a coverage scientist and your reads are sacred. So don't make it too hard. So he used to go to the line of scrimmage and say, well, Mike's doing this or the linebacker's doing that. I'm going to try to predict where to go with the ball. 
none of that matters in this system under Graham Harrell. So he's gotten to that place where I think he can just be the trigger man. I expect him to rip. All right, you, you obviously have an acumen for this, but what you're describing to me is dumb it down football. Is yeah. that overstating it? Well, I think it's simplified. You know, I think a lot of times offensive players or offensive coordinators, you try to figure out the defense. And that takes up a ton of brain space. And you can't really predict it. And the whole air raid, the air raid is not a system where it's four verticals. That's like the biggest misnomer about it. I spent my offseason studying this system. Like, it's a philosophical approach of simplification, repetition, and mastery. And that's exactly what this offense is. So you're going to run your routes. They only have three days of install. They only have about 12 plays. You're going to run them time after time after time. So you're better than the defense is at covering them. That's where the philosophical approach is completely different than I'm going to scheme you to beat you. One moment. What's your moment? Uh, predictive measurement. What do we got? Well, I go to the rivalry. Utah, BYU. Oh, okay. Okay, Utah, I got a ton of hype. Deserve it. I'm on leading the hype train. I think they're going to go to the CFP. You look at this matchup. Number one, week one. We've been around these yeah. guys. They haven't played great week one. We were there Weaver State last year. They won 41-10. It wasn't great. I called North Dakota game the year before. 37-16 wasn't a great game. Southern Utah, it's not like they were coming out firing in that game. And then you look at the BYU games. They've been tight 2019, 19-13, 35-27. This is going to be a closer game than what we expect because it's week one. Alabama Duke's going to be closer than sure. we expect. So that to me, the moment will be when all of a sudden BYU takes a lead. What does this team do? How do they respond? How do they respond? We call it pace, plays after critical errors. How do they deal with the hype, the pressure, the expectations, et cetera, in a rivalry game when it's like, oh, my God, what's going to happen to our year? Versus, okay, that was that drive. We went three and out three times in a row. They responded in a similar situation. Granted, it wasn't a rival last year in BYU, but there was some crossover with the staff. But remember, offense kind of sputtered out of the gate. Zach Moss rips out that touchdown run. It was like 40-yard touchdown run. Yeah. And all of a sudden, the place just blew up. Yeah, I mean, it's there. It, yeah, it, I, I think they'll show up, but I, I, I can't wait till they go three and out a couple drives in a row. It, it's going to be fun to watch this team because <laughs> that is a foreign environment yeah. for them ever. Kyle Whittingham doesn't want to hear that from you. Fair. Okay, just, just throwing that out yeah. there. I'm going to give you one quick moment because I think next Tuesday when we do Inside Pac-12 Football, once again, Pac-12 Network and the Pac-12 Now app at 6 p.m. Pacific time every single Tuesday, I think the moment is going to be reliving an Oregon State win where Jake Luton throws for over 300 and Pearson Jefferson both go over the century mark. How about that? Mm. High scoring game. Let's get up and down. I hope so. I was just in Research Stadium. Man. Yeah. Let's get that place alive. Chainsaw. Let's get it rocking. Who's your ball. player? Uh, LaVisca, only because I made it a point in the summer to go and see him play and practice. And Different, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, you mentioned the top, right? We talked about Herbert. LaVisca's right there. The dude's just – when Curtis Conway, one of our good friends, starts salivating over another <laughs> wide receiver, you know the guy can play, and LaVisca's certainly going to be on the short list, and hopefully he stays healthy all year long because he was on, pat, on pace to get to New York for Heisman where you have a vote. Um, good stuff by you. We're looking for a name, a title for what we're going to yes. be doing. You can follow us on Twitter at Yogi Roth, at Mike underscore EM, same deal on Instagram as well. We will see everyone on Tuesday on television. Yeah, let us know what you think. Comment, drop it in the DMs, whatever you want to do, we're putting it on you guys. Yogi's what asking you to, to slide into the DMs. I love it. I love it. We'll see you guys on, on positive Tuesday. note. Love you. <laughs>